A few years ago, our institution uh, started testing for LGL in our MDS uh, patients. And so um, we looked at, uh, in our low co large cohort of patients, we, we looked at those patients who actually tested positive for LGL. So there were 200, 30% of uh, 600, over 600 patients had the LGL clone. So baseline characteristics were similar. However, um, patients who had LGL were over the age of 60, uh, and they were all therapy-related MDS. The median overall survival uh, for patients with LGL and MDS uh, was inferior, and it, it was only observed in those with lower risk MDS. Uh, there was no difference in AML transformation. There was no difference in hypomethylating agents, or ISTs. Uh, and, uh, but those that did not have the LGL clone had a higher response to lenalidomide. Uh, we, have, we also looked at data, 151 patients uh, with next-gen sequencing. Uh, and the only uh, mutation that was observed more in the LGL groups were the IDH2. Uh, the implications for this study, you know, we want to make sure that we're truly diagnosing uh, patients uh, with LGL, but that, and that it's not concomitant uh, LGL and MDS. A good conclusion or some way of wrapping everything up would be if there's anything that clinics should be aware of going forwards with this, if they are, like you say, trying to treat LGL directly? Well, if the patients had, truly had a diagnosis of LGL, we would treat them as an LGL. Um, you know, so we wouldn't want to treat a patient who just had um, a reactionary clone, you know, with an incorrect therapy. We want to make sure that we're giving the patients the correct therapies.